Has piano music really come to an end? To answer this question, we, composer and two pianists, decided to conduct the artistic research. In order to reveal the future perspectives of piano, we had to analyse its history. We consider the history of piano music as a cycle consisting of several lives. Life, according to composer Ega Jabashvili, is a time-bound phenomenon representing one of many phases of existence. Each life consists of invisible gravitational waves that pass through one phase of time and space and then disappear. The new waves arise, creating a new phase of existence and a new life emerges. The transitional period between the phases is the apocalypse. Thus, the whole history of piano is divided by us into nine lives. How do we justify them? The piano and its sound are generally known to be a result of a reconsideration of the priorities that took place in the 18th century art. Against the background of global subjectivization of art, the spirit of the new epoch demanded rather spontaneous reflection of emotions. The necessity to express flexible emotions created a need for a new instrument, producing more dynamic and flexible sound than a harpsichord, the leading keyboard instrument of the preceding era. This idea was so topical that three masters, almost at the same time, created keyboard instruments employing innovative sound-producing mechanisms. Though Bartolomeo Cristofori is regarded as an inventor of the piano, the Florentine master had two competitors for the name of the new instrument's creator. Thus, the idea of the piano was in the air, and it materialized. In 1711, Italian journalist Scipione Maffei published an article about Cristofori's new instrument he saw in the Toscany court supporting the need for it. Bartolomeo Cristofori died in 1731. One year later, an Italian composer, Ludovico Giustini, composed 12 sonatas for keyboard with loud and soft, popularly called with hammers, that are presumably the earliest pieces composed exclusively for a new instrument, known now as a piano. Although the harpsichord still retained its place for some years, step by step it was replaced by the new instrument that has dominated the music world for the next two centuries, starting from classicism that intensively exploited the idea of the alteration of soft and loud, forte and piano. New epoch, with its permanently transforming aesthetical principles, set new challenges to the piano and its sound. As a result, Christophoris Piano has been undergoing multiple transformations in structure and mechanism. Both aesthetical principles and transformations were directly reflected in music composed for the instrument. For instance, invention of the double escapement by Sebastian Erard in 1821 was of great significance, resulting in composers incorporating into music passages performed at very high speed, consequently challenging virtuoso playing. A virtuoso playing becomes an inseparable part of image of romanticism. In the 20th century, interest of composers shifts towards notion of color, or timber, more conventional term in music. It was especially this generation of composers that opened up timber as a first-tier parameter to be exploited and pursued in its own right, writes Nolan Gasser, even in works for solo piano, such as Debussy's Preludes, new timbers are explored via extremes of register, as well as by unique and colorful approaches to harmony and melody. With the serialism came new leading principle defining the essence of music. In this kind of music, different elements are subordinated to common principles of organization, sound parameters among others. For serialists, sound is a combination of four independent parameters that could be organized. That brings us to stronger individualization of separate terms, pointillism or point music. The parameters themselves could be understood as different types of motion, of vibrations, taking place in a given time, consequently as different manifestations of time. According to Stockhausen, 
Not only rhythmic events are involved in the organization of musical time, but also the pitch scale and timbre. Simply, pitch and timbre are microtemporal manifestations that the ear cannot perceive as temporal categories. Consequently, musical composition could be perceived as the unity of several temporal layers in which time flows differently at different tempi. This idea, interpreted in a free way, resulted in the piano pieces where left and right hands play in different tempi, or where so-called variable groups create another time layer, which exists within the basic time structure. Along with the individualization of separate tones, the new epoch brought quite radical re-evaluation of the concept of the musical sound that resulted in the integration of all kinds of sounds and noises in music. The separate sound becomes the separate world, the whole space, inspiring composers to invent new techniques of sound production that would enable acoustic instruments to produce those new sounds. Piano inspired several generations of composers to invent various types of extended technique. Thus, for centuries, composers and piano masters have been enriching the sound production abilities of the piano, modifying the mechanism of the instrument, as well as performance technique. It's quite difficult to imagine what kind of innovations the acoustic piano could present to listeners, even in case of employing electronic technologies. Has piano music really come to an end? Our answer to this question is a modified instrument developed in the framework of our artistic research project. Let me give a floor now to Eka Jabashvili, composer, inventor of the modified piano, Modeka. Each era adapts the instruments to the principles of the corresponding musical thinking to the, its contemporary music sounds. The piano was modified according to Eka Chabashvili's scheme, which was enriched with the ideas of piano master Alexander Zirakashvili. The name of the instrument is produced by a combination of the names of its actors. Before modifying the instrument, we studied the various performing methods and approaches of compositional and performing schools or styles in different epochs. The following changes were made uh, while modifying the instruments. First, we were replaced the hammer heads with various materials. Some were left with felt and others were replaced with wood, metal, leather, rubber and cardboard. Second, we added a new mechanism for the production of overtones in the lower register produced with an added uh, pedal. Third, we added a new pedal function for partial opening of the pedals. Fourth, a half string was being added in front of the keyboard to be used for a different way of producing a sound. Fifth, the instrument's body was also changed for the convenience of playing on the strings. The wood covered part of the modified piano body was cut out. Sixth, the strings were tuned according to the atomic nuclear musical system. Seventh, the keyboard uh, has been significantly influenced by changing the tuning. The keys were given different colors for your orientation when playing, which also affected the notation. Actually, we started research trying not to search for answers, but rather to prove that piano music did not come to an end that it is just the end of one of its many lives, that the instrument still has the potential to inspire composers to compose innovative, truly contemporary music that reflects the spirit of the epoch. Maybe in this case we are not objective but rather subjective researchers, 
in love with instrument of great historical importance, but one of the characteristics of artistic research is that it accepts subjectivity as opposed to the classical scientific methods. Artistic researcher Johann Verbecker states that the arts, design and architecture are not involved in an exact logical understanding of our world, as are the exact sciences, but they complement this with a knowledge field which builds on human experience and behavior. They build on their own specific positions in relation to reality. We think it is this subjectivity that enables not only the arts, design and architecture, but also artistic researchers to build on their own specific positions in relation to reality.